When people come here, they see our sprinklers at work. And they say, oh, damsels of rainbows are dancing on your farm. We thought that place of leprosy is a dirty place, but here we have seen the damsels of rainbow dancing. We say our tears are made of rainbows. That's why they are dancing here. The resolve to change the whole landscape of our life is within, within this stout heart with a mighty faith. To live with dignity, confidence, self-respect, ennobled by a humanity, balanced in body, mind and environment, in health. The highest aspirations of mankind, the truest ideals of Earth's religions, and seemingly so elusive as to cause raging philosophical debates, existential inquiry, cynicism and despair. Here in Maharashtra, deep in the heart of India, is a small swath of green in a parched and arid land where 40 years ago, quietly, without fuss, a man called Murlidhar Devidas Amte dedicated his life, not to grandiose notions of religious or philosophical ideal, but simply to his fellow men. The health of a people, Baba Amte, as he is affectionately known, has said, is measured by the condition of its lost, its last, its least. The fundamental principle of the many revolutions in our planet's turbulent human history and that final knowledge in the depths of the human heart. What was to become Anandvan was a 25-acre patch of jungle given to Baba by the government of Maharashtra in 1951 to start a leprosorium. <laughs> Baba, his wife Sadantai, and their two infant sons, Vikas and Prakash, accompanied by six leprosy patients, a lame cow, and 14 rupees, less than one US dollar, built this glade of peace with determination commitment and compassion as their tools. Today, it is a world that nurtures human potential, sets free the human spirit, brings health to body and environment. It is a statement of that most elusive of achievements, a balanced ecology of mind. <laughs>
इसको ऊपर का टाइट हाँ अभी तो इधर नहीं बराबर Chandramani was a master carpenter before he contracted leprosy in the jungles of his native Orissa while on the run from the authorities for his somewhat violent political activism he lost both fingers and toes to the disease and if that was not enough a road accident lost him an arm but a carpenter Chandramani is determined to remain Chandramani has invented a water-cured brick, low in cement, cheap to produce, which could revolutionize low-cost housing in India. From the early days, Anandvan has been much modernized. Water recharging under this dry and difficult land has been undertaken using deep wells, biomass stabilization, integrated energy cycles, and these beamless curved roof houses which Chandramani supervises. They are inexpensive, easy to construct, cool in the summer, and many of the people of Anandwan live in them. He's a good host. He's a good host. When would you touch? The leprobacillus numbs the nerves. The first indications of infection are insensate patches of skin. The lack of feeling in the body's extremities causes accidents which result in deformities. Ulcers and gangrene develop in untreated cases. Leprosy is the least contagious of all contagious diseases. But as facts about it are not widely understood, the diseased terrify the healthy and its victims suffer vicious social ostracism. Had they come earlier, we could have prevented the deformities. Because of the social ostracism and the prejudice, they didn't come to us early. They came so late. He has become a good host. Whole body is infiltrated with <laughs> leprobacillus. Anandvan welcomes all who need to come. Those patients who feel able and ready to rejoin the world are encouraged to do so. Those with memories of humiliation which cannot be erased contribute to the welfare of others. The nurses, those who cook and carry and clean, are leprosy patients. The basic needs of all are met. Shelter, clothing, food and medicine. The incapable who live in wards in the hospital are cared for by those more able.
Choti Bai is a tribal from Jalgaon district. Her husband threw her out when she first contracted leprosy. She has not seen her four sons or husband again. Her father and her brother looked after her for many years. But her gangrenous legs were already amputated before she found her niche at Anandvan. True courage is surely the ability to endure, true heroism to rise above life's injustices, and a sane society, one which nurtures such a she. Joy in Anandavan is much more infectious than the disease in Anandavan. And the courage in Anandavan is much more contagious than the affliction in Anandavan. Right. Happiness is aptly defined as continuous creative activity is happiness. These people who are denied its right to happiness are in search of happiness. And they got it. You can see that beaming faces. And they giving the message to the world that charity destroys work beliefs. They saying that we remember him for what is left rather than curse him for what is lost. This is how the philosophy of life should be practiced in life. They are giving dignity to life. They have changed the whole profile. Outcast man and outcast land. Similarly, if a common man decides to change the profile of this world, with his uncommon determination, he can change it. Mahav and Gandhi mightily believed in this concept. Common man, you know. Nayak, Nayak, kya khoj rahe Nalayak? Nayak to tum ho. For many years, the people of Anandvan were ostracized by neighboring towns and villages. Leprosy was a dread disease. The very air in Anandvan was unclean. Then the victims of this dread disease built two universities for the healthy with their numb and disabled hands. Today, students come to this canteen, as do the inhabitants of Anandvan. And you forget as you sit here that those who serve you are the crippled, living close beside victims of leprosy. Baba cannot sit. Constant pain from six fused vertebrae in his lower back curtails his activities. He is past 75 now. His hemoglobin count is 8. His pulse rate, 56. His blood pressure, unstable. A year ago, he and his wife Sadantai were in a road accident. And recently, 
he suffered a second heart attack. But he can rest only reluctantly. The whole thing is concerned with man. I agree with Krishnaji and all religions say it, that intense passion for love is compassion. When I, when I raise my voice against big dams, I see that my bruised, uprooted tribal there, one who loses his right to live, and I am with him. For Bharat Jodo also, this disparity, ups in poverty, ignorance, and then some having to face the, the wants of the morrow, and others don't know how to spend their money. How can India be united like this? Yawning gap between paucity and plenty, between penury and poverty and plentitude. I could not tolerate it, so I am out to knit India with a mighty faith in the people. <laughs> Take heart, unlimited, for the battle. In 1985 and 1987, Baba, lying in his mobile van, led bicycle marches across the length and breadth of India to create an awareness that the nation need not succumb to divisive forces. As the psyche of India's Sikh community lay scarred by terrorism and communal riots, Baba's was a bold initiative, an affirmation on behalf of all those who cared. Against the advice of the police and security forces, he went into the Golden Temple in Amritsar to plead pacifism and consanguinity to the terrorists pointing guns at him as he walked in. Expose, explore, exploit. This is the message. Pursue, persuade, not the gun. You know, the means over the end by the gun is of no use. Murlidhar Devidas Amte came from a family of wealthy landowners. He trained to be a lawyer. Reacting to the injustices of life around him, he determined to study the little understood disease, leprosy, and committed himself to bringing respect to the rejects of society. This brought him into confrontation with his family. So abandoning his inheritance, with the full support of his wife, Sadantai, he embarked on a life of service which was to ennoble all who came in contact with him. It was raining when Baba saw a leprosy patient. There were maggots coming out of the patient's nose. Baba, with fear in his mind, picked up a gunny sack lying nearby and put it on the patient for protection from the rain. He came home. We were recently married. And he went into deep thought. I am an Abhair Sadak, the fearless one, he thought. That day, Baba told me all this and said, Now I want to work with leprosy patients. I said, Yes, I want to do it too. Baba has made no effort to impose a personal creed on those that make Anandvan their home. Their welcome is unconditional. While he has been influenced by Mahatma Gandhi and Vinobha Bhavi, and while his own life is austere, Baba's gift to the people of Anandvan is that of secularism, normalcy, and a gentle pragmatism.
People disfigured with leprosy would want to buy beautifying cosmetics is to Baba a complete validation of his work. Anandvan has nurseries, many nurseries. Seedlings are tendered here by the thousands, by those rejected by their own children, and by those who may not have any. They are used in biomass stabilization in Anandvan, carried out in an entirely scientific and rational manner, and for sale to neighboring villages and towns. The commitment to the greening of Anandvan is total. Dunya ko sandej denge. Baba has a puckish humor. He has had erected behind his house a monument to an anonymous tree. Visiting forest guards receive a resounding oratory on the sanctity of trees. I listen to the whispering of this anonymous tree from my fallen bed. I have experienced the drowsiness of every autumn and passions of every spring. Hence, I do not seek dust in shame and loneliness. Why do you? Jivnachi, Jivnamadhe mi shishirachi sushyani vasantik masti upabogiliya hai. Tamele zaminwani mi kosundari padlo matit mralot, tari mara na khera hai, na khanta hai. Constructive work without politics is sterile. And politics without constructive work is important. Both are not good things. Anandam is trying to do, practice both. He demonstrates his commitment to this in his protest against the displacement of the tribal Madiagons deep in the mountains of Garcholi. Here at Hemalkasa, his second son, Dr. Prakashamte, runs another of Baba's projects, a hospital which brings medicine to the tribal Gons. We are with the Adivasis, the tribals. We will not tolerate the exploitation of the land or rivers. 
we are ready to die for the cause. At night, we will sleep on the river bed, dance and sing, see a film, same as we do at Anandvan. On the banks of the Indravati, all of us will sleep. In the morning, as the sun rises, we will say and ask the sun god, Surya, O oh Lord, this river Indravati is ours. There will be jewels on her feet, hands and arms, like on these Adivasi women, but no chains. This pledge we will take with water in our hands. We stand here, O oh Divine Mother, and take this pledge. The river is the essence in all its meaning. She is Lokmata, our mother river. Keeping her in my palm, I pledge that we will not let these waters be chained by big dams. But we will let them be jeweled by small dams and agricultural projects. Some 10,000 guns and a hundred of India's leading environmentalists form in the early dawn, in Baba's words, a fence of human legs, a chain of human arms, linking themselves across the Indravati River. It is a monumental feat, without the resource of mass media, to organize this protest against the giant dams proposed by the government across the Indravati and Godavari rivers. These will, apart from depriving 75,000 guns of their homes, flood 170,000 hectares of prime, moist, deciduous forests, rich in teak. Wildlife, including tigers, bison, buffalo and cheetah, will be driven out. The ecological balance of the area will be disturbed. I sought my soul, my soul I could not see. And I sought my God, my God eluded me. But I sought my brother, I found all the three. I need to have a time. No, please. No, please. Please. It's a tribute to me. Please, please. I sought my lover. My lover I could not see. I sought my friend. My friend eluded me. I sought my husband. I found all the three. Baba gave his life to caring a long time ago and his committed heart must find each day a larger canvas for all living things must grow. A school in homes for the deaf and dumb, a home for the aged, a home for orphans, a school for the blind. Shastriya Sangeet, Loka Sangeet, Filmi Sangeet, Ya Paiki, Kuntiahi, Eka Vishayavar, the human heart calling out across the centuries and across nations for a new world. Send me your poor, your lost, your hungry. The seemingly impossible, here it is done. <laughs> हाँ, हेलो, नहीं का, ठीक है, हाँ, पुरा दाना जो साढ़े पांच साह सात, चंद्रवर्ण दाना वाले साढ़े चार पांच साह क्या न बसे से जाता है क्या न सुबह निकलने 
Anandvan is managed by the Maharogi Seva Samiti, a registered society run by a committee of 16. Baba's work has expanded beyond Anandvan to Hemalkasa, Ashokvan, Nagapali and Somnath. At Somnath, 90 kilometers away from Anandvan, is the home of youth camps, out of which came the concept of knitting India. Wasteland has been reclaimed for agriculture and it has an agricultural university dedicated to practical training. At Ashokvan is yet another university built by leprosy patients, attended by the healthy of Nagpur. Nagapali is the base camp for the virtually inaccessible hospital center at Hemalkasa. All projects interact with each other, exchanging produce and personnel. We have tremendous decentralization and we uh, believe in the capacity of the uh, common human being and we find that uh, they are never you trust them and they never let you down. And we have, uh, this is the uh, largest institution of its kind in the world and it uh, has every known handicap. It covers the whole spectrum from cradle to coffin and there are not uh, many literate people here and they run this whole infrastructure and we believe in collective output and we found that uh, it is such a huge infrastructure we don't have to trust a discipline onto them and they really behave well it's sort of an extended family which is a departure from do's and don'ts and it's a completely self-discipline Anandvan today supports 5,000 people. 600 of them get government grants. The schools coming under the state government are subsidized. The people generate 6 million rupees a year, making it generally self-sufficient. But for the fact that the man-land ratio in recent years has made it increasingly difficult to support so many. People serve each other in a network of normalcy, which is remarkable only in that those who are disabled are instinctively more sensitive to the needs of those like themselves. If there be a validation on earth of the existence of a greater power within us, it is surely this, that those whose hands can neither feel nor hold, work daily on machines without injury. That a self-sufficient society should exist which fits machines to the needs of people, not people to the rhythm of machines. That those who work need no supervision, no monitoring. That the will to work is a form of worship, a celebration of life. Anandvan today is not the isolated patch of jungle it was 40 years ago. Industrial India has spread itself to the furthest hinterland of the country. Two youths from the Walters refrigeration factory nearby joined Baba's Knit India marches. Today they bring their colleagues to pay their respects to Baba. <laughs> <laughs> While Baba will not subject people to the dehumanizing rhythm of industry, he does not, as did the Mahatma, reject its role. If industrialization means destroying the homes of the Gons, he will fight it. But if it brings technology to the rehabilitation effort, telephones and Xerox machines, he will accept it. Industry will have to realize the ultimate role of industry is to become a trustee of that. This role, they will have to play in the whole world. Otherwise, disparity will, will be increasing. The idea propagated by Gandhiji about trusteeship, the workers should also accept it. In this synthesis, Baba demonstrates the balance of his vision. To make machines work for people rather than against them is a matter of emphasis.
Ram Rao Ladke has been in Anandwan for 35 years. His father had a tendu leaf business in Warora. We made 500 rupees a day in those days, Ram Rao says. One rupee a basket. But when he contracted leprosy, his parents-in-law insisted he leave home. He came to Anandwan. Here he earns a hundred rupees a month for incidental expenses. And for him this and his orchards are enough. I'm here as no one at home accepted me. Thus I decided to stay here. I work hard and look after the orchard and farm in 15 acres of land. I have a wife and children, but do not want to go home. I want to die here. Home is not a happy place to be in. This is where I'm happy. To those unable to equate disability with joy, leprosy with the love of life, Anandvan is an experience which transforms. It is a small miracle, which in 450 acres demonstrates the infinite possibilities of the human spirit. It is the kind of society all religions around the world, through history, have called on humanity to build, on love and faith and determination. Love alone can resurrect any man in agony. Nothing else. That is the basic thing in life. Hmm? At times I think that I have become a slave to my pain. But I, when I take to new activities, I feel my that actually serves as a chloroform to my pain and I forget about it. I say it's ancient history. I don't bother about it. Vigorous activity anesthetizes one's pain. That is my experience with it. And then the epigraph which I want to be to be written if at all anybody cares to build one grave for me. Here lies a man who was too tired even to pray. The Lord is kind. <laughs> so people ask me, don't you pray, don't you have these prayer meetings and all this? And I say, he's too tired even to pray. The Lord is kind. <laughs> There is no despair at Anandvan, no cynicism, no existential inquiry, no philosophical debates. The business of living is celebrated, as is the business of dying. The wheel of existence is accepted without flamboyance, without dramatics, with a practicality and humility, which is the essence of worship. Daily, myself and my wife, Sadhana, come to this place early morning and pay our tribute to these anonymous soldiers who fought bravely by carrying affluent scars of service at Anandavan, giving a fight against the so-called hallelujah disease of leprosy. During our lifetime, we wanted to donate our blood. Our blood was refused because we suffered from the hallelujah so-called disease of leprosy. The society thought like that. Though it's the most innocent disease. It's the most feebly communicable disease. So they say, Baba, 
if you die in Anandavan. And we will die because this is our home. Last. It has given us tender and affectionate care to our, during our lifetime. When we walked all alone in the world, you gave us this, provided us with this opportunity to build up this progressive alliance. So, you should plant fruit trees. I hope the ash from our body should be put in these pits and some patient volunteering for mango tree, some saying orange, some saying Mosambi, so that the fruits, without any prejudice, will be eaten by the healthy society. And remember for a moment, those tiny little rosy roots of the trees, sucking the bone marrow from my dead body, tickling my dead skin, consuming the calcium from my bones. It's a very lovely sight, imagine. This is the palm which has snatched victory from the very jaws of defeat. This is the palm which has snatched the colors from the rainbow and given it to the crops and flowers and fruits in Anandavan. And so, they taught me how to resurrect life. The... Yeah. Uh -huh. 